Hey, the dog days of summer are soon upon us, and with that comes the AC complaints that we all look forward to every year. Leading the charge, my AC isn't blowing cold. You get the vehicle inside, you do some basic checks, you quickly discover that the AC compressor clutch isn't engaging. Well, a lot of reasons that can cause that, isn't there? How to narrow that field down real quick is the topic of this edition of The Trainer. Okay, you've quickly determined that the compressor clutch is not engaging when the AC is commanded on. A lot of reasons that can be, right? On an OBD2 vehicle, let's say 1996 and later, the AC compressor clutch is controlled by a relay, which in turn is controlled by the engine control module. And as with any other circuit controlled by the ECM, certain parameters have to be met before the ECM will give the green light and turn the circuit on. What are factors that affect that? Well, what about low refrigerant? That's certainly a possibility. Or a mechanical issue with the compressor clutch itself? That's another possibility. Or how about an electrical circuit issue in either the switch side of the relay circuit or the solenoid side of the relay circuit? All of these are possibilities. We can narrow them down very quickly though, going right to the relay and doing some basic tests. But before we do that, we need to understand exactly what components are involved in the AC system on the vehicle we're working on for that we need to review the wiring diagram. You know, there are a lot of things that can cause the AC compressor clutch not to engage. We're going to start off by checking a few of the uh, electrical forces of the circuit. Before we do that, uh, we kind of have to identify exactly what's involved in the circuit. So we're going to take a look at the schematic first. This is the schematic for the Ranger that we're using in uh, today's example. Uh, so the first thing in any schematic is to identify the load, the component that's doing the work. Uh, again, in this case, it's the AC compressor clutch, which is controlled by the clutch field coil, and you can see that right here near the center of this diagram. Now, there are a couple of wires coming off of the uh, clutch field coil, so we want to find out where it's getting power, where the controls are. Uh, in other words, we want to follow this path all the way back to the battery. So let's just pick one. We'll start here, and we'll see that uh, this wire is eventually leading to ground so that's one half of the path isn't it because once we get to ground we know the rest of the path is uh, taken up from the body ground uh, back to the battery through the ba uh, ground cable so we have that side completed for the clutch now let's take a look at the other side and follow this wire back to the AC clutch control relay well, that's not unusual in these circuits, right? Many things are controlled by relay. Uh, following this through, we can see that this is actually the passing through the switch portion of the relay, continuing to follow that path back up to uh, the AC clutch system fuse. So 10 amp fuse right here in the engine compartment fuse relay box, which we have uh, identified on our component locator, so we know where that is. Uh, and notice here, hot at all times means that no matter where the key position is, there is battery voltage present at this fuse. Uh, now, if we want to follow a path all the way back to the battery, we can do that. We can pull up the power distribution diagram and uh, follow that path back uh, to the battery through the fuse uh, all the way back to the positive post of the battery. So we have that side of the circuit complete. But what we want to need to understand here is that anytime we have a relay control like we do here, uh, there's actually two circuits that we have to worry about. Uh, something's got to close the switch in the relay, doesn't it? And that's going to be on the solenoid side of the relay. So this now becomes another circuit we need to trace, know where that's going, what is causing this solenoid to receive power and ground. We still have not identified what's going to turn this relay on, but we have identified the control of the switch internal in the relay for the clutch coil itself. Uh, so we're going to back up. Here's the solenoid portion of the relay. Now we're going to check the wiring of that. We'll start here. And we can see that that's going to the powertrain control module, the ECM. Well, that makes sense. Most uh, OBD2 cars, nearly every OBD2 car, um, controls the AC compressor clutch. The ECM does that because it's considered emissions. Uh, why is it considered emissions? Well, if it doesn't turn off when it's supposed to, it's putting extra load on the, uh, on the car. Uh, that's going to increase the stuff coming out of the tailpipe. It's going to decrease fuel economy. 
so it's a big deal. It's going to be controlled by the ECM. So let's go check to the other side. So we now we know that's uh, is that power and ground. We're not sure that yet. I'm going to take a quick look here and see what the other side goes. Red is usually a good indication that there's uh, power on that wire. And sure enough, it's coming from the uh, PCM power relay. So I think there's the power coming into the solenoid. So this is going to be some kind of a ground control. So let's follow that and see what we got. Uh, in order for that clutch control to, to turn on the ECM, uh, it's looking for some signals, isn't it? We got to see an AC demand signal. That's coming uh, from the uh, AC control assembly. In other words, the driver's got to turn the switch on, right, and, and tell the ECM that, yeah, I want the AC on. So that's what that does. That's the signal coming in. If that's not working, that's going to keep the clutch coil from coming on, isn't it? So that's, that could be a possible problem. Um, now here we have the AC clutch cycling switch. Okay, we have a cycling pressure switch here. And pressure cutoff switch here. Well, that's our, our, our low side pressure and our high side pressure switches, aren't they? And keep following that path that's going all the way back to ground. So what we have to have here is a request from the control head telling the ECM that we want the AC on. The ACM is going to close the switch internally, clutch control switch internally, and route the power from this relay through the solenoid to ground through the two pressure cutoff switches. So there's a lot going on here just to get this switch to close. Um, what's going to be the easiest way to find out where in the circuit the problem lies? Is it on the solenoid side? Is it on the switch side of the relay? Or is it actually in the component itself? Uh, maybe an open or a mechanical problem that's preventing this from working. Well, that's what we're going to find out uh, next using the U-Activate. Okay, here's the process in a nutshell. I'm going to go and access the circuit for the AC compressor clutch uh, coil directly at the relay. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Some of you may used to bypassing the relay with a piece of wire or some other nonsense or swapping relays. Does that really get you where you want to get to very quickly? No, I don't, I don't think so. I'm going to show you a little bit better way. Uh, but there are a few ways that you can do it. Uh, one, we can access the fuse that feeds the relay, do some current testing there. Uh, I'm going to use this, though. This is called the U-Activate, and this bypasses or takes the place of the relay in the circuit and allows me to do some checks on both sides, the switch side that feeds the power to the compressor clutch coil and the control side, the solenoid side, that the ECM is turning on and off. And once I get some indications of what's doing what to who, I can narrow down on where exactly or what the cause is of that compressor clutch not engaging. Okay, there are several adapters that come with the tool to uh, allow you to mate it to nearly any uh, relay the, that you run into. So we're just going to install the, the proper connector in place of the uh, factory relay. And then I'm going to install the other end on the back of the box. Now, this is staggered, so you can't get it on backwards. And then once we're in place, we're, uh, we're ready to start. Uh, now, the first thing I'm going to do is find out on the switch side of the relay which lead here, which one of those is the battery power. Uh, now, you recall from the schematic, battery power is hot at all times. So all I do is move this down. It lights up red. That tells me that the red pin is the lead coming from the fuse. And I do indeed have power to the relay. Uh, if it had turned green, it's just a matter of, of which one is connected. Uh, green doesn't necessarily mean that ground, it's just going to tell me which one is hot. So now that I have this in place, I can actually make the move to on, and I can physically see and hear that the clutch coil is engaging. The clutch is indeed working. So that tells me right now that the switch circuit path is intact and functional. Relay could be now questionable as to whether this is the part that's at fault or not. So to, in order to, to verify that though, I need to do one more thing. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is verify that the solenoid side of the, EC, the uh, relay circuit is working the way it's supposed to. And that's gonna let me know that the ECM is uh, seeing all the parameters it wants to see. Uh, it's decided to make the decision to go ahead and turn the AC compressor on. It completes that path to ground you know, for the, the relay circuit on the uh, solenoid side and everything's fine and dandy there. If not, then I'm going to start looking at pressure switches, 
uh, refrigerant charge, uh, and electrical circuit issues on that side of the circuit. Now, to make that happen, I've got to get the car set up to where it's going to turn the AC on. That means, in this case, uh, engine set uh, uh, running and uh, the control set to max AC. So let me go ahead and get that done. Okay, with the engine running, the AC on, you can see here that the little green LED light is lit. This is the side of the tester that actually takes the place of the solenoid side of the relay. Since we, of course, have bypassed the relay with this tool. And I could actually do a voltage drop measurement on that side of the circuit if I wanted to by using these two points as the points on my load. Remember, uh, voltage drop testing, you want to be as close to your load as possible. Well, here's my load right here on that circuit. I can check either side, power and ground, and make sure that I don't have any excessive drop or corrosion issues. If this wasn't lit, I can do the same thing. Am I having power to the circuit like I'm supposed to? Is there a problem on the ground side, voltage drop uh, through a, a part of the circuit that maybe I don't know about yet? I can Just think of it as a breakout box. I can use that right here to find out where the problem is. Now that I know that I have this lit, which means the solenoid side of the circuit is okay, and we already checked the switch side of the circuit. That was okay. We did successfully engage the clutch. There's really only two things left that could be causing this problem. What do you think they are? How'd you like that segue? Pretty cool, huh? Well, here was the question. We've already seen that the little green diode lit here on the relay tester, the U-Activate tester. That let me know that the ECM was indeed completing the circuit. Power was being fed to the solenoid side of the relay circuit. Ground was being completed. That side of the circuit's okay. The ECM is seeing everything that it wants to see. It's happy. So the pressure cutout switches, the low side and high side switches, they're not gonna be an issue. Refrigerant charge is certainly not an issue. We know that's not the cause of the pressure uh, not engaging because the ECM saw what it wanted to see. Um, so we also did the switch side, which means that I can bypass this. I can engage the compressor clutch anytime I want. Um, but we don't know what the real underlying causes, do we? Well, you should have it pretty fair, narrowed down by now. The only thing that's left is the relay. Remember though, when you're replacing the relay, make sure you use the one of the proper type. Many of these have a diode in the circuit, and if you fail to put that in there, you could lead to some problems. Uh, by burning up some spots on the ECM. May not cause a failure right away, but it will lead to a failure uh, uh, down the road. Now, what if the clutch wasn't engaging when I hit the switch? Could that still mean something? Could it be a mechanical issue or a circuit issue? Well, we can find that out too. I'm just gonna take a low amp current clamp and I'm gonna put that right there in that test loop and then I'm gonna engage that switch and measure the current flow. Now, of course, we know this one's working. We can hear it engaging but if I didn't get that click, I didn't visually see that compressor working, if I got current flow uh, anywhere, I would say three to five amps, then I would know the clutch windings, the electrical portion of the coil circuit, the clutch, uh, compressor clutch coil circuit is working the way it's supposed to. It's gotta be a mechanical issue, a mechanical fault with that clutch. And I've seen more, that happen more than once. So if, before I start trying to dig that one that's buried at the bottom of the engine compartment where you can't see it, just on a guess, I want to know for sure that we just confirmed for sure. Now you can do a lot of the same type of tests with just an amp clamp and a digital multimeter. If there's a fuse powering both the solenoid and the switch side of the relay with the current relay, the stock relay in place, just bypass that fuse, put in a little jumper, a little fuse buddy, hook your low amp clamp there and then engage the AC system by setting the controls to max AC and starting the engine. When you get no current flow, you know you have an electrical problem. And it's gonna be somewhere on the solenoid side of the circuit because obviously the solenoid is not engaging. Now it could be wiring, it could be a, a pressure sensor, it could be a lack of refrigerant that's causing the ECM to see something it didn't like and not turn the solenoid on. If, however, that you see 
some current, say half an amp, three tenths of an amp, very small amount. Well, that's telling you that the ECM is happy and it did indeed turn the solenoid portion of the circuit on. Now the problem is on the switch side, the circuit going through the relay to the compressor clutch coil itself. And as we just demonstrated, if you see three to five amps, but the clutch is not engaging, well, the circuit's okay, it's a mechanical problem with the clutch. So either method will work just fine. And you can even apply what you learned here on any relay control circuit. Mm, I don't know, like fuel pumps. That's gonna do it for this edition of the trainer. See you next month.